When it comes to digital menu boards, there's a couple of ways that you can use the product library. If you're not integrating with a third-party point of sale or using static JPEGs, you can certainly add those products manually to the product library. So this is what the products looks like. It's under its own section in the software. And you'll see that I have a few sample products in here. We can use the Create New button to create additional products. We'll also talk about the Upload or Download Products tab here in just a moment. Let's go through the product detail and kind of explain how this is set up. So the idea with the product library is that you add a central database uh, or library of products and then those can be incorporated into your layouts. So you can create a dynamic layout uh, where you tell that layout, portion it out with a background, maybe some images, and then you're creating what we call a product table, which allows you to display the text within that layout design. So let me just open up one of our designers here. So this is an example of the product table and how you can map it to display the product name, the price, the calories description, and so on. So we'll come back to the layout side. On the product detail, the product number at the top of our list here is optional. You don't have to have a product number. If you leave the product number blank, either from here or in the spreadsheet, it's going to automatically generate a number for the system to have. But if you do have a catalog or inventory number, you're more than welcome to enter that product number here. It can be any letter number combination that you would like or just, uh, just some words. The name is exactly the way the product's going to display on the menu. So if it were all capital letters under the name here, that's exactly the way that that's going to display on the live menu. The sort, category, subcategory, day of the week, this is more relevant towards uh, menu boards that are on a schedule, a cyclical uh, three or four week cycle. And we'll talk about those settings in a separate video. The Enable checkbox is very popular with the product library. This allows you to turn products on or off just by checking the Enable checkbox. And by default, as we create new products, we'll have to be sure that uh, that's checked by default. But when we're using the Excel spreadsheet to add products, there is a column that we'll, we'll want to make sure that we add uh, an option to turn that on. So by default, all of your products are checked when you're creating new products. And if you just need to quickly remove it from the menu, you can uncheck it and then save and go back to your list. And what happens is the uh, player's side, the hardware side, once the layout design is scheduled or attached, connected to your hardware, whether that's a smart display or external media player, they're gonna be checking in with the software every 60 seconds or so. And they're going to see if you made any changes, like unchecking the enable checkbox or making a price change, things like that. So you have a couple of price points by default, regular price, medium, large price. Um, you can certainly create additional attributes, which we'll talk about. Maybe you need a fourth price point. Um, but these are the defaults for regular price, medium, and large. So by default, you know almost everybody uses the regular price. So I'll just add a price in there. The description is exactly the way you want that text to display, maybe underneath the product name. So when you're setting up your layout, maybe that text is going to display somewhere below the product name or somewhere else. But that's going to display exactly the way you type that text. So again, all capital letters, that's exactly how it's going to display on the layout design. And a couple of options here if you need to indent the description or turn the description on or off. You have that option, which is similar to the enable checkbox, but this just turns the description on or off if you need to do that for certain products. We'll talk about this in another video, but the alcohol checkbox allows you to flag certain products in your product library as alcohol products. And what that does is on the home dashboard here, you have an alcohol checkbox. So this is common for folks like uh, sports arenas, baseball, football. If you have those kind of menus and you need to turn your uh, alcohol products off at a certain time during your event, this allows you to do that with one checkbox. We have the option for image. So if you are 
using products in maybe a product playlist. And we'll talk more about that in a separate video. I'll include a link below this video for product playlists. Style allows you to uh, attach a font style directly to a product. It's very rare that that would be needed, but I would recommend against that, I would actually recommend that you set up all of your styles within the layout designer under the product, uh, product detail. <clears throat> under the layout designer on the product table itself. And I'll, I'll t explain more about that in just a moment. Down below here, we have our additional attributes. So if you need attributes like maybe some icons, some dietary icons like vegan, vegetarian, eat well, the attribute section allows you to create attributes like the checkbox items. So this allows you to connect an image and indicate whether or not that's a, a yes or no action. You also have a, a text field here and a number option, a price option. So you can create additional attributes and indicate what that attribute is going to be. So let me uh, cancel out here. So that's an example of how the uh, image attributes can be added as a checkbox. I'm just going to create a new attribute here, and let's say this is price point four as an example. And maybe we want to have that as text. You have the option to include kind of a default description here, especially if you have uh, multiple folks editing the menu and you want them to see some sort of uh, description of what this field is. You can certainly add that. I'm going to save that, and then I'll go back to our product detail here. I just need to refresh the page. Let me save it because I added a, a price and a name in there. So I'm going to save it and then open up our sample product again here. And now you see we have an additional attribute for price point four. So if you had that additional price option or needed some sort of text in addition to the default text that you have up here, additional attributes can be used. The date range is if you need to schedule specific products. So maybe you have certain days or weeks where you have the product uh, not on the menu. You can certainly indicate that through the calendars here. Or maybe you have uh, some nutritional information like calories. Calories are most popular, I guess you would say, with, uh, with menu boards. You have a bunch of additional uh, uh, nutritional attributes here if needed. The diagram is specific to location-based products, so you can find out more about location-based products in another video that we'll do. You can also find a link in our knowledge base or just search for location-based products from the uh, knowledge base. The view layouts allows you to um, just take a quick glance and uh, see if this is connected. So once you've added products to your product table in the layout, you would actually see those layouts listed out here. So if you're not sure where certain products are on individual menu layouts, you can actually click on that View Layouts tab, see a list of any of those layouts, and also click on them and go directly to the Layout Designer, which is this portion of the software. We're going to come back to it, I promise. So you have the option here to certainly copy, delete, uh, and then save. So save and return to the product list or save to stay on this page. I'm just going to return to our main list. So that's the way you add products through the create new button. If you want to download an Excel spreadsheet, sometimes it's a little bit faster to add a bulk of new products through an Excel. So clicking on the download button here, you don't have to worry about the check boxes above. Just click on download. That will download an Excel spreadsheet, and I have one here. And this is going to give you a column for each one of those attributes. So product number, again, optional. So in this case, I didn't add a product number when I created these products, and it's just going to generate a random number. And when we download a spreadsheet, it will just add that random number to the product uh, number column. And so you can leave those the way they are. Again, the name exactly the way you want it to display on the menu. Chips, as an example here, all capital letters. That's exactly how it's going to display. Category, we don't need to worry about because we're not using the um, integration. But here are your price points. So regular price, medium price, large price. If you change these in any way, just be sure to type it in. So 5.50 for 550. 
no need for a dollar symbol. You'll see that if you change it, it just kind of right justifies here. That's okay. So they are formatted in a specific way. As you change them, they will change. Or if you leave them the way they are, they're just going to upload without any changes. So important to remember, no dollar symbol, no other symbols. Just type in the decimal as you need it. So as you add new products down below here, um, give it a name, a number, and then we'll just kind of move down the line here. So enabled is that enable checkbox I was talking about. You would want to type in yes if uh, you want to keep that turned on by default. We're going to keep scrolling to the right here. The description is exactly the way you want that description to appear on the menu. Calories, if you have any additional attributes um, like the calories, there's your uh, alcohol action there. So if you do have any alcohol products, you can type in yes. And then all the way over here. So we're going to skip over the subcategory, the day of the week, the weekly cycle, uh, because we're just generating a product library that we're automatically going to add these or manually add these products to the layout designer. So over here, we have those additional attributes that we created, like the eat well, the vegan, vegetarian, whole grain. And so any new attributes that you add and you download a new spreadsheet, it's going to show those as a column all the way over here on the right hand side. So let's see here. So sample product five, I'm just going to copy that. We're just going to add another product here. Put $2 in there. We want to be sure to enable it. So yes, we don't have any uh, specific description. So I'm just going to save that. I'm going to close it out. And then we have the option to drag and drop our file into the upload box, or we just click on that upload box to locate that Excel file. That's going to take just a couple of seconds here. If you do have a lot of products, it may take a minute or more to upload all that data, but you'll get a green check mark when it's done. And then we can head back over to our products tab, and you may have to refresh or click search and that will refresh and then you'll see that any new products that you've added any changes that you've made they will reflect on this page so there's sample product six i added that and it's added it to our library so once we've added our products to the product library the next step is creating layouts and i have a couple of sample layouts here you can certainly create new layouts by clicking on the create new button it gives you the option to give your layout a name define the orientation so landscape 1920 1080 if that were if your screen's in portrait mode we would flip that around to 1080 by 1920 and then you can save that or save and go directly into the designer if you create a new layout it's just going to be empty and then we're using the toolbar on the designer to add content so let me call this sample and i'll save this to show you that we now have a new layout and if we click on that layout all of our layouts expand as we click on them to show three icons. So we can always go back to the properties to change the name or the orientation, maybe copy the layout. So that's common for if uh, you want to just make some changes, you don't want those to go live, you can certainly make a copy version of your layout. The designer takes you into the workspace. So this is where you create the menu board. So let me zoom out a little bit just to show you the borders. So this is just showing us where we are as far as our screen goes. So our landscape screen, we see the edges. The checkerboard effect just means that there's nothing in there. So we're using our toolbar here to add images, add text, add the product table. And I'll certainly include some links below this video as far as the layout designer and so some specific knowledge base articles that go through the toolbar specifically and each one of these options on the toolbar. So as an example, add image is going to open up the asset library, the storage space. So this is going to be the little folder icon here. You can certainly upload files to the asset library before you jump into the designer, but you can also do that directly from the layout designer. So the upload media tab here allows you to upload new files here. I already have a couple of backgrounds in there, and so I'm just going to click on one of these and that adds it. So this background is 1920 by 1080, so it is sized to fit the full height and width of the layout. 
If you don't have any design experience to create your own menu layouts, you'll find a lot of free templates to use in the store. So if you click on the little store icon here on the navigation, and we're just going to uncheck assets and widgets and leave layout templates. So you can do a, a keyword search. Usually when I'm using menu boards for specific uh, industries, I'll search by the industry like Q QSR as an example. So this will show you a lot of um, free backgrounds that you can add to your network and then just kind of dissect it as far as replacing the background, replacing the text and the product table. So if you do find any of these, you just click on the next button and that's going to add it to your network. Next, add to my network. It takes a couple of seconds and then it will throw it into the layout side of things. And I already have a couple of layouts in here pre-built. So let's say this, uh, this biker layout here, the biker grill. This was a template that I added and I just kind of added stuff to it. So it would have some sample products in the product tables. The nice thing about adding these templates is that all of the um, zones are in place, like the product table. You don't have to build those from scratch, but uh, we will talk a little bit more about the product table in more detail in another video. So I will throw a couple of sample templates below this video so that you can download and add those to your network and just kind of use those as a base point. So let's talk about the product table and how these products come into the layout designer. So again, the product table icon here on the navigation, that allows you to add any new product tables, especially if you're building a layout from scratch. But once they're in here, then you can move them around you see that I have a couple of instances of this because I copied one of these. I'm just going to delete the copy version. So double clicking on a product table opens up the table. So double click anywhere within the table. This is the product table, this window here. So this provides the framework of how that text is going to pull into the table. So we have our product name, our price, if we need to add calories or a description in here, we would use either the add cell to row, which adds another cell to that row. And then there's an add row button. So if you need to add a description, that's going to add additional rows down below. So let's say we want to have calories after the price. So I'm going to click on our new cell on the right hand side here and the field drop down allows you to select the attributes. So there's a lot of different attributes for price points in here. Um, I'm going to select calories. So you have the option for calories with a couple of suffix options here. Cal, cals, calories. Or if you just want the number, just put calories. And then the cell style, certainly the row style, allows you to apply the same row font style to that row. But, you know, it's quite common for folks to, in good practice, just kind of write justify the price or the calories. So it's good to kind of keep those separate, or at least I would. So in the cell style here, if I click select, You'll see that uh, we have a number of font styles already created, but we'll use the Create New button if we need to create a new font style. And just a quick note on font styles. If you do have a specific font that you want to use, that can be uploaded to the Asset Library. So the little folder icon here on your navigation, if you click on that and then go to the Upload Media tab, you can upload your OTF or TTF font file that you have on your computer, or maybe you've downloaded it from Google Fonts or uh, 1001freefonts.com. You can upload font files. And then from our library here, we can edit any of the existing. So you see that some of these have a right justification here. And I'll select that. But the Create New button allows you to create a new style. Maybe give it a name. Say this is your price uh, for this particular menu. The font dropdown gives you font style options, your font size. Maybe you want to choose a different color here. So we have a, a darker background. Maybe we want to change the default to, from the default, which is black, to a lighter color like white. We click OK there. And then you would save that. I'm going to cancel out of that. I'm just going to choose the price option here because 
maybe we want our calories to be right justified as well. So the next step, before we move on to our description here, we're just going to click on the Apply Table Cell button. And then that's going to save our change. And then we can move on to the next cell. And maybe this one is, is going to be the description. And then maybe we want to choose a cell style or created a cell style for that description. Doesn't look like I have one created. So in that case, we would create a new one and then click Select on it. But then I'm going to move on down here to the middle portion. So the row spacing allows you to space your products out. So if I were to put this down to zero, click apply, that's going to bring, bring things as close as they can be together. But if we want to um, spread them apart a little bit, we can put a higher number in there. These settings here aren't necessary in the way that we're using the product library. In this case, we're just adding products that we want to display on the menu as we want them to display. Um, but if you were integrating with a point of sale system and you need the, a more automated process for those products to automatically pull into the uh, menu layout based on what the point of sale is importing, then these settings would be used. And we'll talk about those in a separate video that concentrates, focuses on the point of sale integration. But down below, this is where you would add any products. So I'm just going to remove the products to show you what it looks like when you don't have any products in there. And then the Add Product button opens up the product library. And then we can kind of go down the line here on all the products that we want to add to this particular uh, product table. So clicking Apply will add those products to our list. We can rearrange the order if we need to move them around. The Add Spacer allows you to kind of group those together. So maybe we want to put a little bit of space in between our sandwiches here. So that, that just shows you, you get a little bit of a space rather than spacing them out all together. You can just add a spacer in between. And you can also add text to that spacer as well. The X on the right hand side again changes or removes any of those products from the table. And then just click apply and then that's going to close down the window. And looks like the price and the calories are a little close together. So what we can do is I'll double click and then we'll just kind of give our prices a little bit more room there to breathe. And then I'll try apply and that looks a little bit better. So you may have to play around with it. So they will move around a little bit. So if you, your names have a, a lot of text like chicken Parmesan, maybe we'd need to give that a little bit more space there. So you may be opening up your product table and adjusting and closing it out and opening it up again. So play around with it to get to where you like it to be. The nice thing about the product tables is once you have one created, then you can find it on your layer here. So if you're not sure which layer it is, just click around and you'll see that expand as far as the table that you're working with or the zone that you're working with. So I'm just going to make a copy version, clicking on this little copy icon here. That adds it up in the top left corner, and then we just need to drag it down, and then we would double click on it and change it if we need to, add or remove any products from this product table. So I do hope this is helpful. Certainly reach out to us if you have any questions on adding products to your product library, and then certainly adding those products to the layout. Lots more videos on the layout side of things. So feel free to take a look at the other videos that we have in the learning library or in the knowledge base.